Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I am sharing my makeup and quite possibly fragrance favorites for 2023. If you are new here, my name is Nadia and I'm a licensed esthetician who loves to test and review skincare products. I am going to try and breeze right through these primer. I feel like the one that had skincare benefits and actual priming benefits for me this year was the Glow Recipe Strawberry BHA Pore Smooth Blur Drops. I'll link my review right above. I would apply this product to my T-zone area where I have the larger pores and would need a blurring effect. Even after removal, this gave my skin skincare benefits where pores looked smaller. You can also use this as a serum as well if you have acne prone skin or larger pores as well. This year I was introduced to the Armani Luminous Silk Perfect Glow Flawless Foundation and the concealer. These two were a hit in my book. Worth every penny. Um, that is the foundation and concealer I am wearing on the skin today. have two shades of the foundation. The shade that was gifted to me was shade 5.9, but I picked up the shade 6.5 and it's clearly the one I've used the most. I can get away with using this with my fingers alone, but I do go in with my beauty blender as well. This just gives the skin a skin-like finish, doesn't look like makeup. Medium coverage, I would say. There are a few things that still just kind of peek through, like my little mole here, another mole here as well, and then just some of the texture and another mole there. They just kind of still peek through. Another foundation that I loved last year as well, but last year it felt like a bit of a cheat when I added it to the video, so I'm adding it today because I still use this foundation as well, the House Labs Triclone Skin Tech Foundation. Now this gives me loads and loads of coverage. It's a very thick formula, I would say, that I can also use with my fingers or with my beauty blender as well. If I am dealing with loads of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, this is what I reach for. If I just want to get full coverage. I would say this is the most full coverage product I have used, even though it is a medium kind of natural finish product. This is what I reach for a little bit. I feel like goes a long way. The shade that I have here is 300, but I also have shade 270 in my collection. Because I loved the foundation so much, I went ahead and picked up the concealer, and I did film a kind of first impressions with check-ins of that, and I did not include it in this video, even though I still reach for the concealer as well. Um, it just doesn't look the best at the end of the day, in my opinion. For bronzer, something that really, I would say, impressed me this year is the Dibs Desert Island Duo Kits. These were introduced to me via Ula Enriksen, PR package. I am wearing the bronzer in shade 5.5. If you have seen any of my videos towards the end of the year, this is the product that I have been using for a bronzer. And I love the formula. It packs pigment. It blends easily. The blushes are amazing as well. So I will uh, be swatching 5.5 here, which is uh, the blush shade is Wine Knot. So I'm gonna just swipe it here, just one swipe, and look at that pigment for the blush. Bronzer, which is what I am wearing today, one swipe, bam. Beautiful, beautiful formula. I picked up two additional shades as well, and I will swipe the other. This I feel like is more spring summer appropriate, but I have been sneaking it in during uh, fall and winter. The blush shade is not so basic and it is like a pe peachy shade. Another blush that I loved 
uh, this year is the Armani in Euphoric, shade 50, Armani Beauty Blush. This is what that looks like it is a beautiful shim shimmery it's a beautiful shimmery peachy pink shade that is just stunning perfect for spring summer you must however love die for the shimmer that is a bit of a finger swatch for you and then let me show it to you right over here next to the dibs shade definitely lighter um but shimmery so you must love a shimmer to enjoy this blush what i am wearing on the cheeks today however is the rms redimension hydra powder blush in sangria these blushes are stunning as well stunning not as shimmery i will say but the color payoff is i would say is extraordinary just look at that finger swatch i'm going to apply it right over here and bam 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 perfect i feel like this is a great winter time shade it's what i am wearing today highlighter i wore a highlighter a lot this year and it has been the shade cookie by benefit it's not the one i'm wearing today i'm wearing the pinkier version of that but i'll show you a swatch um finger swatch this is a beautiful kind of like champagne shade and i'll do a swatchy swatch here Ooh. Bam. Beautiful, beautiful shade. It's the shade that I have worn the most, but I think I mentioned this in the last year's favorite, and this is Tickle. Tickle is more of like a pinky, pinky shimmery highlighter there. This I feel like is was a go-to at the very beginning of the year, but it is the bronzer and blush duo in Hula Beach Vacay. And I used the Hula bronzer a lot. I actually layered it over the Dibs bronzer and it looks really nice. I also liked the shade Shelly here for blush, but before I started using the Dibs, blushes i was using the shade willa which also kind of looks like shelly as well it is a soft neutral rose very basic very every day so those were my blush favorites a powder that i did not think i was going to love but i did get on a sephora favorites kit is the huda beauty baby bake loose baking and setting powder this is in the shade banana and i find the packaging quite innovative but i use it on my under eye and on my t-zone i loved this enough that i picked up a full size and translucent um, i have not used it yet and the reason why i picked it up and was a little apprehensive about picking up a full size is that this is heavily fragranced and my skin doesn't do well with heavily scented uh, products but it did just fine with this i have been using this ever since i got that sephora favorites kit i will link the video over here for you in case you'd like to see this in action lash favorites the lancome cells booster xl mascara primer this is very very gross um, and I definitely need to re-up on this. But this was my favorite mascara primer. Um, I wanted to go back to mascara priming this year and I did enjoy this a lot. The Benefit Fan Fest mascara. This is a fanning and volumizing mascara in, I guess, black. That is what I have on my eyes today. Love, love everything about this. The more I use it, I feel like the better the formula gets. This is my favorite type of mascara wand as well. Favorite, favorite, favorite. More Benefit products that I loved. And they're all on my brows today. Precisely my brow pencil in shade 3.5. The Fluff Up 
Brow Wax. This is a 2023 release. I cannot do my eyebrows without this. And then for more of a fluffy look, um, this is a, a mini travel size that came in a kit that they sent. But this is Gimme Brow. I think it's 3.5 as well. Love these. This is the Huda Beauty Lip Contour in Honey Beige. I love that this is you don't need a sharpener for this because who has sharpeners nowadays? But let me do a very bad swatch for you all. Very beautiful, beautiful shade. Obsessed. This was the year of the gloss for me. I have the Merit Shade Slick Gel Tinted Lip Oil in Maple Tin. That is what I have on my lips today. The Merit Gloss or Lip Oil Formula has been a favorite. One of my other favorites of theirs is the shade Taupe. Amazing. I have this layered over the Benefit Flora Tint. This is a Desert Rose Tinted Lip and Cheek Stain. I do not use this as a cheek stain. I prefer to use this as a lip stain. Stunning. I also love the Bennett Tint. This is the Rose Tinted Lip and Cheek Stain. Um, I know that it looks like I haven't used much, but a little bit goes a long way, and I do kind of mix these together depending on my mood. Recently, Flora Tint and the Merit Lip Oil have been my lip combo of choice. I'm not looking back. But another Lawless Forget the Filler favorite that I have is the Lip Plumping Line Smoothing Gloss in Velvet. Let me do a swatch of the Merit Lip Oil. It's a nice, nice little gloss there. Lawless. This came in that Sephora Favorites kit. This is like a muted rose kind of shade. Uh... We'll do a swatchy here. There's definitely more color payoff in the Lawless formula. This is definitely more like a lip oil. Now I did try a different makeup setting spray this year, the Charlotte Tilbury one, but that is included in my fails of 2023. Ugh. So I will link that video up above. My favorite makeup setting spray of the year was the Professional Super Setter. I think this was a favorite of 2022 as well. I did use it on the, this side for today's filming sesh and I did use the Charlotte Tilbury unit. My gripe with the Charlotte Tilbury was of course the mist, the sprayer, and the smell. It's not a you know lovely scent. This is unscented but the ingredients there don't give it a bad scent at all. This has more of like a natural matte pore diffusing finish, which I love. Fragrance favorites. A surprise of the year was the Kaylee Yum Pistachio Gelato 33. The notes here are pistachio gelato, hazelnut sweet rum, whipped cream, marshmallow, cotton candy. <laughs> um, wow. Amazing. On me, it I can definitely read the marshmallow whipped cream and the pistachio notes. Um, this is soft, fun, girly. And another favorite that was a surprise was the KLE Vanilla 28. I just bought this during the Sephora Fall Sales event and I am almost halfway through. These two layer beautifully together and recently I did add the KLE Eden Sparkling Lychee uh, to my collection. This was a blind by fold size which I haven't done in years. I'm not quite sure how I feel about this just yet but I will say that this combo is divine. Uh, but maybe I'll, I'll mention or talk more about this in the future. It's still in its packaging. Um, but this, uh, it's just, I never thought of myself as a vanilla girl, but I am a vanilla girl. This combo as well gets me some 
amazing compliments and this mixed with musk which apparently KLE is sadly discontinuing got me so many compliments this summer. Let me know if you would like for me to do a KLE fragrance uh, video. Let me know in the comments if you're interested. Another favorite was the Valentino uh, Madonna Born in Roma. I think this is the Intense. This perfect for date night. This is romantic. This is sophisticated. This to me reads luxury. So good. Love the packaging here. It's like so rock and roll. The texture here. This is like a very smooth fragrance as well. This reads beautifully on my skin. And this was gifted to me very generously, very kindly by Valentino. And it was an absolute hit. Um, definitely more of a nighttime going out with my dude kind of fragrance. This I can get away with wearing it during the day as well and this kind of softens that up. This I is definitely more of an, a daytime uh, fragrance for me. That's all I've got for you all today. I hope you enjoyed uh, this quick, easy, digestible makeup fragrance favorites of 2023. I just do not have enough time to talk more about each product. I will say that the Desert Island Duo uh, sets applied really nicely with the Alima Pure Kabuki brush and the Merit brush for, I would use this for blush, bronzer, and then the bronzer also applied very beautifully with this Hourglass brush. Let me know if we have any beauty favorites in common in the comments down below. Um, thank you all so much for watching today's video, for spending some time with me today. I will see you in the next one.